everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do a little sit down Q&A video. Uh, I haven't done one of these really before and I'm in Shanghai at the moment and it's raining and there's nothing else to do because I've already been to the markets, I've got all my things and yeah it sort of ruined this trip because I can't go sightseeing or anything so that's really annoying. Anyways, I have quite a few questions written down on my phone that I have been asked over the time, either on my Instagram or on my YouTube videos, so I thought I would include those in this video. I have them all on my phone, so let's see. Okay, so question number one. This is probably the most asked question, and it's actually probably one of the funniest ones as well, which is fair enough because if you don't fly, then you wouldn't really know the answer to this anyway. Also, please... I just wanted to say, ignore my hair. I've been caught up in the rain about four times today and my hair was absolutely drenched. So, yeah, I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, so question number one is, do you have to pay for your own hotel room when you are away? And the answer to that is no, we don't. The company that we work for takes care of everything, luckily, which is um, very, very lucky. So that's not just with my airline. Every airline pays for your own hotel. They would never expect just to send you somewhere across the, the world and expect you to pay for anything because, I mean, the main reason I can think is probably so that everyone is close and then... I'd imagine it would be quite off-putting for the crew to have to pay for their hotel as well. Uh, it would seem quite irresponsible from the airlines. So, so yeah, they always pay for it, always have. So that's nice. And sometimes we are quite lucky. We do get to stay in some absolutely amazing hotels. Um, and sometimes we don't get to stay as central. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay, question number two is, what is your favourite destination? Oh, that's a tough one because I actually, um, I don't know, there's things that I love about everywhere that we go and luckily enough we do go to quite a few places, we go to a lot of sunny destinations, the US, Far East, so I think I don't have one favourite but my top three would probably have to be, uh, I mean New York is always going to be so so close to my heart, I just love New York so much. I also love 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 Hong Kong and probably... A sunny destination so either Miami or St. Lucia one of those two maybe Miami okay question number three is do you have to pay for your food and yes we do but um, I mean again this is different with every airline but the way that it works with us is we have like a little card that gets loaded with money uh, every trip that we go on and it's different for every trip so it depends how long you're going for how expensive the areas that you're staying in and how many nights you're there for so it all depends really so but yeah our food is sort of paid for basically Question number four is, do you get free flights? Now, I wish we got free flights. It's an ongoing joke that passengers tend to um, say to us on board as well, like probably every single flight. But no, so we don't really get free flights, not with my airline anyway. I don't think you would get free flights with um, other airlines either. So what we have at my airline is we have a couple of like free flights every year they're not free you basically just pay the taxes on them which depends again could be from like 120 to 160 pounds or so for a return and yes so those are our free flights and we get about seven of them every year so um yeah that's basically what our free flights are with other airlines i mean they are going to be standby which means that obviously all the passengers get on before you as they should do anyway as they pay so much more for their flights and so if there's space then we get on if there's no space then we don't get on we either get rolled onto the next flight or the next day whenever whenever that is basically i'm sure other airlines have their own sort of way of doing it i'm not really sure how it goes to be honest Okay, question number five is, does it not get lonely and how do you cope when it does? Um, to be honest, it is actually, it, ca it can be a really lonely job, unfortunately. I think at the start, when I started this job, I had, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I was just very, I just knew that I was very lucky that I got to fly to all these amazing places. But sometimes it did mean that I had to go around those places on my own just because... 
I didn't know the crew or the crew had other plans and I remember actually one day I was sat in my, my hotel room in New York and I had the most amazing view overlooking the Empire State Building and just the whole of New York basically and I sat there and I got pretty sad I thought oh no way I need to experience all of this on my own I don't get to share this with my family which was a bit upsetting but it is what it is um, after a while having flown with this company for nearly two years now I have sort of developed my own routine so I I don't really feel that lonely anymore and even if the rest of the crew don't want to do anything then I'll just go out and do things on my own like for example today I'm in Shanghai and as I've already said okay and the weather is terrible I've also said that and so this morning I went to the markets on my own this is my first time here so I have never ever been here before my internet doesn't work here on my phone and we are basically in the middle of nowhere so I thought it was quite brave of me to just sit on this bus to go into to the area where the markets are and I spent a good four or five hours there today and then I have managed to meet up with some other crew that are from another airline and I got a taxi back with them otherwise I was so stuck I was sat there eating some food by myself and I thought that's it I am not going to be able to get back to the hotel in this rain. I couldn't have walked. I didn't. I couldn't Google anything. There, there was no way I could connect to internet. I didn't know how the taxis work. Taxi people don't even speak English here. So it was a bit of a nightmare. But we made it work. And you know, if I wouldn't have done that this morning, then I would have just been stuck in my hotel room all day. And I know for a fact that I wouldn't have wanted to do that. So I am quite glad that I did that. And yeah, sometimes you just have to be um, brave, really. Next question is, are you not scared of flying? Uh, to be honest, funny story, I did used to be a little bit scared of flying at the start when I started. I mean, not when I started, more like before I started to fly. And I think this job is really good for conquering your fears. So I'm definitely not scared of flying anymore. It does cross my mind sometimes, like do you realize you are like you know 30,000 more like 40,000 feet in the air there's nothing under you and then you're flying over the Atlantic for hours and hours and like these really long flights like Shanghai Hong Kong and Johannesburg and like San Francisco so the west coast of America they are really really long flights and yeah sometimes it does cross my mind but I tend to not think about it also second of all because I need to be able to make sure that I look uh, comfortable enough in front of passengers and I just don't think it would look very professional if I didn't if I was scared of flying and I had to comfort someone who was also scared of flying it just wouldn't really work and to be honest you do get used to it um, so yeah I've been flying for nearly three years now and I think I'm pretty used to flying now <laughs> Next question is, how do you deal with difficult passengers situations on board? Um, to be honest, I tend to not have too many difficult passengers and again it's something that just comes with experience. Obviously I've not been flying for 20-30 years. There are loads of people who have and they have all the experience in the world. But I do think that I, I mean I can manage these situations quite well just because I've seen quite a few different things happening on board. And I've managed to sort of solve them, if you know what I mean. We don't really have a choice. You just sort of have to make it work on board. Sometimes it is the smallest things in the world. For example, you'll do all the meals and the passengers in the middle will be upset that they didn't get their first choice. So they didn't get the chickens that, that they were looking forward to all flight. And you can have to offer them the beef or the vegetarian option and they get a little bit upset. But there's, there's only so much we can do. We can't physically get off the airplane, go to the shop and get them chicken, do you know? Know what I mean it is really sort of hard to please everyone and I think it's also important for everyone mainly passengers to remember that we are there for their safety and their safety basically we're not there to you know um, give them the most amazing meal of their life obviously I do understand they are really long flights and I want to make sure that everyone gets a meal on a flight because it is a long flight. Of course they have the choice to bring their own food but sometimes it's quite inconvenient and sometimes people do rely to have food on the plane and we do have food, we do have quite a lot of food and so when situations like that happen uh, there's always solutions to those you know. So for example if that were to happen then I would most probably offer them a meal from premium or even from first class so I would 
sort of quietly tell them okay so i'm so so sorry especially when they get quite mad i get down and i'm like i'm so sorry we don't have anything like that but we have the upper class food which is chicken and it gets served in this nice bowl and everything proper cutlery and they're like oh yes 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 that will be perfect oh my god you're amazing and then you bring the food out you give it to them and they are absolutely over the moon and it's those little things that go so far i think i mean they are so thankful it's probably made their whole entire flight that you were able to do that for them but then for me it's i mean i've gone out my way a tiny bit but not really because it's such a long flight and i much rather make them happy than upset and complain and you know all that stuff so i'd like to treat people the way that i would like to be treated i suppose as well so um i mean i've had a few instances where um i haven't really managed to come up with a solution but i do always try my best i think there's only so much we can do okay so next question is best tips for jet lag wow um i want some tips for jet lag too please because i mean it's hard it is hard it's probably the worst thing about this job jet lag because it's completely out of your control i mean of course you can try and sleep as much as you can but for example i do struggle with coming far east so this side of the world because it obviously all depends on the schedule of the flight so with shanghai i i think i woke up about eight in the morning got to work we took off and then by the time we got here it was quite early or may, i think it was maybe lunchtime or so well no i think it was in the morning and i made this huge mistake of going to sleep yesterday and then i managed to sleep all the way to the evening and then i was up all night and then i slept about two hours in the morning and it's just been such a long day for me but that was my mistake i shouldn't have really gone to sleep but sometimes you're just tired and your body clock is completely messed up and you just need to go to sleep but yeah this was by far the most difficult trip <laughs> but i'm still alive and it's okay and then going west coast you do struggle because you're up super early and and yeah i suppose it takes your body quite a while to adjust i mean i tend to be okay when i'm away from home it's when i go back home that i really do struggle because then i can be lazy i know i can be lazy when i'm away from home as well but i just i don't know i tend to want to make the most of my trips so when i'm away i want to go out i want to see these places i want to go shopping uh sightseeing eating different food i don't know even if we do stay in the middle of nowhere it's always okay to just go out and sort of walk around or go to the gym or whatever and but when i'm at home i can just get into bed and sleep i could watch netflix all day i could cuddle up with my dog and be in bed all day um yeah that's like an acceptable solution <laughs> so um so yeah i haven't quite mastered how to deal with jet lag yet but i will let you know when i do any tips are also welcome so if you have any tips please comment them in the comment section down below next question is funny stories oh I have so many, especially recently, and I mean, I've got quite a few stories from the past three years that I've been flying. Could you just imagine the amount of stories um, someone would have who's been flying for 30 years? Incredible. I think I'm going to have to dedicate a video especially for those funny stories. So let me know in the comment section down below if you would like to see that. It would be pretty funny. Next question is, do you get scared when there's really bad turbulence? And to be honest, I, hmm, if it's really, really bad turbulence, I do get a bit hot and a bit sweaty and I get a hot flush and I'm a bit like, whew, okay, this is a bit of excitement to our day. But in all seriousness, it does add a bit of excitement to our day, as bad as it sounds. Um, you can't take them too seriously because they are things that we just can't do anything about. And again, it's the same sort of thing with being scared of flying. If the passengers are scared of turbulence, the last thing they want to see is me being scared on board as well because I am supposed to be there for their comfort as well. So I don't think it would really help if I was scared like them. So yeah, and it is quite fun sometimes. We get to sit down, strap in, and we're like this. And it, I don't know, it's, I guess it can be a little bit funny sometimes. <laughs> Not when it goes on for too long. And I've got quite a few stories from when we've had really bad turbulence and that was a bit scary to be honest. Okay, so the last question is how much do you get paid? And to be honest, I don't really have an answer to this because it's such, I mean, there's so many different factors that 
contribute to our pay so we get sort of hourly pay basic pay sector pay allowances but i um so yeah it, it really all depends on where we are going and how long the flight is how busy we are that month um so yeah it's got a few things and again it differs with every airline so every airline will be earning different amounts some will be earning better than others so yeah i suppose it's just the way it is I know you guys really enjoy watching these crew related videos so I hope you enjoyed this as well and I hope I've managed to answer some of your questions. So yeah, thank you so so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Bye!